I've actually received two grants from the Lung Association and uh, both those grants have really helped me establish myself uh, as an independent researcher. Uh, I'm what's called a physician investigator which means I do uh, some clinical work and some research work and I try and marry the uh, research uh, to clinical questions that I come across when I see patients at the bedside or in clinic and sometimes these are very fundamental questions as to why do people get asthma, uh, why is it that uh, some people who smoke get chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and others don't and these are some of the questions that we're addressing in the laboratory now. Respiratory research is extremely important. For us, we study COPD or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. For COPD patients, our research really is about trying to improve their quality of life, allowing them to live independently longer so that they can shovel the walk, mow their lawn, get back to activities they had before they got their lung disease. Canada has led the way in many of the re respiratory research projects uh, that have made uh, huge impacts on patient care uh, in the respiratory field throughout the world over the last 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, we've seen this specifically in areas of asthma, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, and many other respiratory diseases as well. And Canada is blessed to have a very strong respiratory research program, and this is translated into, uh, I believe, uh, you know, uh, the best care we can give to respiratory patients uh, worldwide, and it's available here in Canada. I think there's so many things that we want to ask and we have to really choose what is the most important because you can't really afford to be testing everything. There's always a list of things that needs to be done and we just don't have the people or the time or the money to be able to do that. So it's a lot of just choosing what's most important at the time. My research is primarily interested in asthma and asthma is a lung condition that makes it difficult to breathe. One, a characteristic feature of asthma is variable airflow constriction. It's when the airways constrict too much and too quickly to normally innocuous substances such as house dust mite or cat dander. Well, a lot of the research we're doing, we're trying to, to improve on rehab. Uh, we've got several projects, including this one, on the go, and it ultimately it's looking at trying to either maximize what's going on in the rehab program or try and make the changes more permanent following, following rehab. Ultimately, we hope that we see some good outcomes and that we can look towards adopting these interventions or these therapies full-time in the program. So it's my hope that some of our findings become adopted into standard clinical practice. The grant that we received from the Lung Association in 2007 was to look at how dietary fatty acids uh, called omega-3 fatty acids that we, you read about and they're in lots of things now they're in yogurts and eggs and you can get them naturally from fish like salmon and flax seeds and so these these foods are getting less and less in our diet so now they're starting to supplement things like yogurts and egg um, we think that they actually have anti-inflammatory properties and we tested whether giving these fatty acids to uh, cells that are involved in allergy could inhibit the response. So that was the first grant and what we did was use the data that we got from the Lung Association grant to go forward to a bigger grant to get more money so that we could look in animal models to see if we could actually inhibit asthma in these animals. And so that work is now ongoing and it looks like there is some effect on the ability to uh, inhibit the animals becoming allergic. So it's critically important to keep funding lung research. Uh, many of the breakthroughs that we've had in the last five years that are now routinely used in clinical practice were of course being researched 10 years ago. And looking forward we have a number of unanswered questions in lung health uh, that need to be addressed and need to be addressed urgently. Uh, as I said, we still have people dying from asthma, and this is uh, uh, a tragedy in that this is totally preventable. We are facing an epidemic of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or in the layman's terms, this is smoker's bronchitis and emphysema. Uh, by the year 2020, the World Health Organization says that COPD will be the third leading cause of death. Another major area that needs funding is uh, in the area of uh, smoking cessation, and uh, prevention of, of lung diseases, uh, environmental control, and these to date haven't been uh, well funded in the past. 
Uh, and finally, of course, the issue of lung cancer, which is now the leading cause of cancer deaths uh, throughout Canada, but as well as here, as, uh, here in Alberta. Finding research in lung disease is extremely important. To me, it's all about innovation. This is our ability to innovate in our healthcare system. If we don't have this innovation, we're not going to see improvements, we're not going to see improved therapies. Research in the area of lung health is critically important. We're dealing today with, for example, COPD, which is the fastest and only growing cause of death in our country. We are also dealing with asthma, which is now the most common condition, chronic condition, for children. We're dealing with sleep apnea, where hundreds of thousands of people are finding themselves struggling to manage their days and manage their lives, leading to all kinds of other diseases and chronic conditions. Science is really the basis of new knowledge, and it's the basis of the new knowledge that we require as a society to be able to manage lung health better into the future. The Lung Association sees ourselves contributing to that knowledge base. We see ourselves building that knowledge base so that in the future, far fewer people will suffer from chronic health conditions and chronic lung health conditions. And we will be able to diagnose and identify those conditions early and be able to manage those conditions early and really minimize the impact on the health system. For more information on services provided by the Lung Association, Alberta and Northwest Territories, please visit our website at www.ab.lung.ca or call 1-888-566-5864.